Welcome to lesson 9 about bridging and switching in Cisco is easy tutorial. The address of the tutorial can be found right here, ciscoiseasy.blogspot.com. Feel free to pop in, just read the, the text through and hopefully you'll find this informative. As a summary, I've prepared this video uh, just to get you going if you want to uh, see this very quickly how the process occurs without much reading. Uh, just go ahead and watch the video to the end. Now, in the video, um, I need to start with uh, recalling and see, looking at the structure of Ethernet frame. And two important pieces of information we're going to use in this video is source and destination MAC address. They are going to be used to build the MAC address table and make forwarding decision on the switch. So in my example here, I prepared a sample topology in which we will see uh, switch number one, which initially has a content addressable memory table empty. By the way, this CAM stands for MAC address table, that's a more, more commonly used uh, term. Switch number two has also empty MAC address table, that's the initial stage. And we have four computers connected to the respective ports, as you see in the picture. Now, in my first transmission I'm going to show you is computer one is going to be sending transmission packets, frames, towards computer three. So all one MAC addresses is the source, all three in the MAC address is destination of that transmission. Let me quickly bring up, uh, bring up my toolbox. I'm going to grab in layers. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try my painting skills. Now, computer one with this source address is sending a frame towards port FZ1 switch one with the destination all three. The first step the switch number one is going to do is going to read the source MAC address and map the MAC address to the incoming port, which is F01. The next action is the switch is going to look at the destination, and which in our context is all three, and try will try to locate the outbound port for that destination. Now, as uh, the number three MAC address hasn't been learned yet, the switch can do only one thing, which is called flooding, uh, and send. Excuse me, my brush too. And send this MAC, this frame out of all active ports. That phenomenon is called flooding, and flooding is basically uh, done in this situation. The two other situations you you'd experience flooding on the switch is when switch um, uses broadcasts MAC address it has to flood the frame out of all active ports except the port it arrived on and for multi multicast transmissions it occurs in a similar way so what happens next <coughs> switch number two is receiving frame with the source all ones and destination all threes the port is F012 the first action switch number two reads the source MAC address and maps this to the incoming port 12. The next thing, similar to switch number one, is, tr is going to be trying to locate the outbound port for 3333, which as of this moment doesn't exist. What it does, like switch number one, is going to do flooding of that frame out of all active ports. Now, one side note, what computers do with those frames that are not destined for them, they basically ditch them. So it's like in this context, uh, computer number two uh, did receive a transmission from 1111 destined to all threes. It just silently ignored the frame as it was not the destination of that frame. Now the same will uh, happen to our four, sorry, computer four which uh, upon reading the destination and comparing with its own MAC address it's going to ditch the frame. Switch, uh, sorry, computer 3 is going to analyze process the frame frame as the destination is its own NIC, own adapter and according to TCP IP rules all the encapsulation process occurs. Now let's imagine that this time for a change computer 3 with a source all 3 is going to send a reply to computer A with this computer, a computer one with a MAC addresses all ones. So what it does, it sends the frame down the port F02 
Switch number two is going to read the source MAC address of this incoming frame and is going to map this to the port F02 by doing the following thing. This way, switch to learn where computer 3 is located. Now, next action is to go to, let me just remove my traffic layer, go back to the destination MAC address and try to find where the destination is already known. So destination 111 actually is already mapped to port F012. That port becomes the outbound port for that transmission. This time, there is no flooding occurring on that lab, on that switch. Switch number one, upon receiving that frame, will read the source MAC address, which is all three, and will map this to the port F012, the receiving port. Step by step, we're creating MAC address table. The next action, to find the, where destination 1111 is, it will consult this content addressable memory and will find very quickly that the outbound port for that transmission is port F01 as of this statement here, as of this entry in the MAC address table. So what is it, it is going to do? It's going to send this down the, the frame down this port. The port is processed by computer one. This time no flooding um, either. So you can quickly imagine what's going to happen when all other computers begin to talk, when begin to speak. They're going to learn, the switches are going to learn all the MAC addresses from the incoming frame by reading source MAC address. So let's just, for as a last example here, let's just imagine that uh, computer 4 is sending ARP request, which is the broadcast uh, destination MAC address, towards port F01. Again, the first action, switch number 2 is reading source MAC address on port F01 and maps the MAC address like shown here. The next action is to look at the destination MAC address as it is a broadcast. You can never learn broadcast MAC address because it's always the destination and switches learn MAC address from incoming frame by reading the source. The frame is uh, flooded everywhere as per, as per rules. Switch number one will also flood this, but before that happens, it also reads the source MAC address uh, on port F012, maps the source MAC address to the incoming port. The source was computer 4. Now, let's say for the last thing here, the computer 2 maybe received that and maybe wants to reply uh, and send message back to computer 4. So what is going to happen is computer I'm just here grab my pen and computer 2 is sending reply to computer 4 source MAC address again is 2222 all twos received on port number 2 switch number 1 reads the source MAC address places 2222 on this specific port maps this to oops Click the right selection. Maps is to port F02. <clears throat> now destination is all four. Switch number one knows where all four computer is. That's outbound port F012. Moves the frame out that port. Switch number two will read the source MAC address all twos on port F012. By reading the source MAC address, we'll map this to the port F012 destination is all four and of course we already know where four is switch number two finds the outbound port for that transmission which is port number f01 and transmits this directly to that port so this way switch uh, populates the mac address table and from now on it can use port to port transmissions according to that database meanwhile thank you very much for watching please stay tuned for the next lessons